Hello, welcome to the Scholar Fedu. This is our UTME prep series where we provide relatively detailed solutions and explanations to the UTME questions. And in this um, recording, we're looking at the UTME questions for biology for the year 2020. This is the first part of the recording. We are going to look at the first 20 questions out of the 40 questions. Before we continue, please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, like and share our video, and you can also visit our website, scholar.com or exams.scholar.com to practice UTME and uh, modular quizzes for free. First question on the start is, the hormone which regulates the amount of glucose in the blood is called? The insulin. The insulin is produced by the pancreas. Okay, the insulin and the glucagon, they are two hormones that are produced by the pancreas. These hormones they function in the control of the level of um, glucose in the body. Um, so the glu the glucagon helps to increase the level of glucose or sugar in the body, while the insulin helps to lower the level of um, uh, of next person on body systems. And the minister says the amination occurs in the it occurs in the liver so the amination what it does is it helps to maintain the level of amino acid in um, the body so it occurs majorly in the liver partially it also occurs in the kidney next on ecology in an agricultural ecosystem the biotic components consist of so there are two components in an ecosystem the biotic components and the abiotic component. The biotic component is the living component of the ecosystem. That is the part of this ecosystem that has to do with living organism. What about the component is the non-living um, component of the ecosystem. And if you look at the options here, the biotic components here would consist of the crops, which are plants, the pests, which are animals, and beneficial um, insects. So it is crops, pests, and beneficial insects. If you look at the other option, there are some abiotic factors that you have there. For example, like temperature is abiotic is an abiotic component. Um, water and soil. Next question: not on ecology and living organisms. Epiphytes growing on the branches of trees provide an example of the relationship known as. All right. So let us explore the option. Now there are different um, types of relationships that, ex that can exist between you know two organisms. One is what we call parasitism. So parasitism is is a relationship between two organisms in which one organism uh, benefits, that's the parasite benefits, while the other organism, which is regarded as the host, is armed. Okay, so one organism is benefiting while the other one is armed. That is parasitism. The second one is commensalism is a feeling relationship in which one organism which is regarded as a commensal benefits while the other organism regarded as the host does not benefit and it is not armed okay that is commensalism sulfitism is a feeling relationship in which an organism regarded as a sulfite feeds on dead matter okay it feeds on dead matter dead and decaying matter while olefitism is another term that is used for um, autotrophic nutrition which is a mode of nutrition in which organisms are able to manufacture their food all right so if you look at the relation between epiphytes okay growing on trees it is and it is a commensalism uh, it's commensalism in the sense that the epiphyte benefits from the plant that it is going on I mean in um, the plant what the plant does is it provides a structure for the epiphyte okay but the epiphyte itself has its own feeding mechanism and all of that so it does not harm the host plant so it's next question on living organism the IV of rhizopus is said to be non-septate because it's so non-septate IV do not have cross wall okay so it has no cross next question on cell and its environment the function of ribosome in cells is so the ribosome is an organ in cell that functions in protein synthesis that is the manufacturing of uh, protein Next question on reproduction. In which of the following does external fertilization take place? That is in told. So external fertilization is um, a type of reproduction process in which the fusion of the egg and um, the sperm cell and the egg cell occurs outside the body of the organisms. And such organisms are said to be oviparous. For example, in the toad. What the toad does is it lays the egg, the female toad lays, lays the egg outside, then the male um, toad sprays you know, the sperm on it. So the fertilization of those eggs occurs outside the body of um, the toad. Next question on digestion. 
the velus in the small intestine is significant because it because it increases the surface area for absorption okay for absorption so um absorption of nutrients okay occurs in the small intestine and that occurs through the villi we have a website at scholar.com where you could practice exams for free the uterine exam and the post exam it also features modular quizzes in physics chemistry and biology so if you've studied a topic in any of the subjects and you want to test your understanding of the topic you can head on to our website at scholar.com and take modular quizzes for free also if you sign up on the website it has a personalized dashboard where you could use to check your progress in learning we also have interactive sessions on the website and on our social media uh, platform freebies are also available to top performance on the website butterfly the butterfly is of great economic importance because because it acts as what we call a pollinating agent or an agent of pollination okay so it pollinates flowers of crops and other plants what that means is what we call pollination is the transfer of gametes okay pollen grains from the male flower to the female flower so what happens with uh, with butterfly is butterflies some of them they uh, butterfly by large they suck nectars from flowers so what happens is when if when a butterfly goes to a flower okay to suck nectar in the process of doing that some of the pollen grains okay of that plant may rub on on may rub on the um the butterfly that is some of them may just stick to its body so when the butterfly moves from that flower to another flower some of those pollen grains may be shaking off okay so in that way that butterfly has facilitated or contributed to pollination that is the transfer of those pollen grains between those flowers next question on reproduction and courtship behavior the bright colors of the comb and feathers in the peacock are for they are for attracting mates for courtship okay they are for attracting mates for next question on ecology what is the term used to describe biotic and abiotic factors in the environment of the organism that is the ecosystem the ecosystem is the sum total of all the biotic and abiotic factors that influence living or the life in a given community next on microorganisms and ecology which of the following instruments is not used in measuring abiotic factors in any habitat all right so in an ecosystem we have abiotic factors and abiotic factors biotic factors are those that have to do with living organism while abiotic are those that have to do with non-living organism okay if we look at all of this instrument that are listed here for example the hygrometer is used in measuring uh, relative humidity the thermometer is used to measure temperature while the wind vane is used to measure the direction of wind but the microscope is not used to measure something that is you know abiotic it is used to study living organisms micro organisms that is those tiny organisms that cannot be seen okay in detail using the um, the naked eye so the microorganism is associated with a living thing okay it's associated with a living thing so it is not used to measure an abiotic factors but a biotic factor so you have microscope Next question on living organism. The smallest living organism which share the characteristics of both living and non living matter matter are that is the virus. So the virus are viruses are regarded as living or non living, depending on the medium in which they are in. So when a virus is in a living cell, okay, it becomes living. It taps into the mechanism of that cell that it is in. Its mechanism of reproduction of um of uh, nutrition and all of that so it is a living you know a living entity when it is inside a living cell okay while outside a living cell it is a non-living matter so we have viruses they share the characteristics of both living next question on cell and its environment the process by which a red blood cell placed in the still water absorbs water until it's burst and release its content into the surrounding is known as This is what is called hemolysis. Okay, this happens when a cell, a living cell, is placed in an uh, an hypotonic solution, that is a solution of low concentration. So what happens is that that cell is going to absorb substances from that hypotonic from that hypotonic uh, medium. 
so the red blood cell placed in a distilled water the contents of the of the red blood cell they are of higher concentration than the um the distilled water so what happens in such a medium is that the red blood cell is going to draw in the distilled water and it continues to do that until it has it has fully stretched and it has become what we call um surgeon when it has become surgeon now further absorption is going to lead to the bursting or the splitting of that um red blood cell and that is we call it hemolysis next on excretion and excretion system which of the following waste products in plants is excreted through the stomata and lens cells carbon dioxide so the waste products in plants are the water vapor carbon dioxide and oxygen and these waste products are removed through the stomata or through the lens cell you can also join our online tutorial classes for different classes we have tutorials for students in ss1 2 or 3 we also have for utme candidates for jam candidates for students who want to write a jam or the utm exam and for those who want to have the post utm exam after the utm exam and also for candidates that are sitting for WAEC exam or GCE or NECO. And we offer this tutorial on various platforms. So you could join us on WhatsApp or on Telegram. You could be on Zoom or on Google Classroom. So we have various platforms where we take our tutorial. The links to join the platform are available on our website at scholar.com. Or you could also check it out in the video description below. Alright, using the same diagram, the neural arc is labeled. The part labeled I I here is all called the neural arc. The neural arc is that part of the vertebrae, okay, or the bones of the spine that the spinal cord runs through. Okay, that is the neural arc. Now, um if you look here we have a diagram of a typical vertebrae. So this long projection here labeled I is all called the spinous process. We call it the spinous process. I I okay is called the neural arc. That is this part. It's called the neural arc. While I I I this projections to the side of the vertebrae, to the right and left of the vertebrae, we call it the transverse process. Okay, it's called the transverse process. Well this one here, this part here, okay, is called the body or the centrum okay so basically the part the both i i here is the new next on the excretory system the excretory structure in the atom is the the nephridium is a excretory structure in the atom the morphigian tool is in insects that's a excretory structure in the insects the flame cell is in flat forms while the kidney we have it in animals like humans for example okay use the kidney it functions also in um, restoration but in the freedom is the excretory structure in it next on respiration in which of the following vertebrate does the skin function as a respiratory surface that is in frogs okay in frogs and toads so um amphibians like frog they um they do what we call cutaneous respiration where the exchange of gas occurs you know uh, between you know um, their body and the environment through the skin surface respiration through the skin is what we call cutaneous respiration and that occurs that is found in frog it occurs in frog it occurs in toad okay and some other amphib next on the mustaches the process of walking is under the control of the part of the brain called that is the cerebellum okay the cerebellum is the major part of the in brain okay which helps in the coordination of movement and balancing and walking of course is part of movement so the cerebellum plays a role in the coordination of movement okay don't forget to check out our playlist we have different playlists we have for full solutions to UTME or jam questions and in physics chemistry and biology we also have for modular quizzes as well
okay we will also have a playlist for post semi or post jam exam and also for crash courses in physics chemistry and biology so don't forget to check out our playlist for the available videos so that's it for this recording thank you very much for watching um, please don't forget to subscribe to our youtube channel at scholar Fedu. okay like and share our content and visit our website at scholar.com to practice the exam and modular quizzes for free thank you